Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here. We've got our standard bay a little bit uh, used and busy right now, so we're going to be at a different spot here, but the testing and the fitting and the swinging from Thomas will all be the same. Uh, we've got Callaway Maverick drivers today. We're going to go through all three models, explore some options, and Thomas might fit himself a little bit as well. So I'm intrigued because Callaway always is tremendous with their drivers, and it doesn't look like that's different with Maverick. Yeah, so today we're going to hit all three different models. Um, we're going to play around some settings. So we're going to talk about adjusting the weights around in the Sub-Zero and in the Maverick Max. And then we're going to start playing around with these hosel settings a little bit here. Thomas, for the test, we have the same shaft, I believe, for every club head, I'm sure. Yeah, we're going to hit the Aldilla Rogue 60X. This is one of the stock offerings by Callaway, um, 45 and a half inches. Perfect. And we'll hit you know four to five, probably four good shots in each different setting, each different model, and we'll see what we find out. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's, uh, let's get after it. All right, Thomas. So we're starting with Callaway Maverick, the standard model, standard club head. Yep. Um, that should be an interesting test here, kind of, kind of fit you, but also just you know see how this, uh, all the different head shapes and fitting options work. Yeah. So I'm going to start out in the S and N, so stated aloft, neutral setting. Okay. Nine perfect. degree heads. Perfect. Wow. Uh, two feet of curve to the right. A little more spin there. But. Now, Thomas, you know, you've, you've hit, Ca we went down to Callaway, you hit Maverick, you've probably hit it a bunch of times too, and I know you did trying to find out your driver for 2020, and uh, what do you think of what Callaway's done with Maverick and the artificial intelligence of it? You know, including art artificial intelligence, having the flash face, having the jailbreak. Yeah. I think the Maverick's going to do really, really well in 2020. Um, so it's exciting that we still have the luxury to make adjustments as well. Yeah. It doesn't have that sliding weight kind of like the, the, the Epic line would have. So yeah. Epic Flash and Epic had that sliding perim yep. perimeter weight. But there's enough. I mean, mo they found that most tour pros don't really like to ju sure. adjust that stuff anyway. Um, so you've got three options with Maverick. So you've got the Maverick Standard, Maverick Sub-Zero. Yeah and Maverick Max, which you can put in that drawer setting there too. So you've got adjustment there as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I couldn't hit any straighter, really. I was, pretty, I was pretty happy with how straight those were going. But you got club speed over 110, ball speed 166. You got smash, you got your first one, smash factor was over 1.5. <laughs> um, that's, you kind of lowered your spin down the stretch here after getting one up in the 27 range. That's. Those are some really solid numbers there, Thomas. Pretty that's, good numbers. That's pretty darn good. It's, I mean, I'm saying that considering what I've seen from you before, which is obviously excellent. So, Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's hot. I mean, the, you mentioned that ball speed, 167. I don't think I've really seen. I'm, I would love to find a driver get me 170. So yeah. for me, I haven't found that yet. That's just part of me not being able to swing fast enough yet. But if we can get close, mm -hmm. we know that's going to be hotter. There's going to be more potential distance. Sure. So. Now, like you mentioned, you know, we've talked about briefly the three different models here. We can kind of see now where, you know, how the Maverick Max changes things, how the Maverick Sub-Zero changes things as well. Uh, I mean, right now, the standard model, I mean, I, for you, that spin number, 2100, looks pretty darn good. We'll see how the Sub-Zero and the Max maybe change things here. So let's go to the Sub-Zero, okay. kind of their, their standard weight setup, and go from there. Sounds good. Okay, Thomas, you got the Sub-Zero in your hand. Looking down at it, how does it compare to the standard Maverick model? I mean, instantly compared to the Maverick standard model, it looks maybe a little more compact. Played the uh, Sub Zero and um, the Flash, and, and the flash that last year. So I kind of like the look of that. I'm looking at setup, and it looks like it's just maybe a little bit flatter, too. So maybe a little bit more anti left pull flight pr pronounced there. But otherwise, just a little more compact, maybe a little bit flatter. Sure. OK. <laughs> You've mentioned that the Sub Zero may be a little bit more open, or sit a little bit more open as opposed to the standard. And I mean, it's it appears like that might be the case based on the numbers here, anyway, and the, the shot dispersion we're seeing. Yeah. So with my driver, what I play my driver, 
nine degrees, but I also have it in the D setting on, on the line angle, so it makes it play a little more upright. Okay. So it kind of counteracts that a little bit. Sure. For me, looking down at this, I feel like it's going to go right all yeah. day, every, every single shot. And we noticed that, that I had three or four in a row that yeah. just kind of were out to the right side a little bit more. The reason why it is spinning a little more is because that bull flight. Yeah. So. Let's even get one more here and hit it a little more solid. All right, so we'll kind of use four good shots with sort of each one here. And yep. I think with standard one, we'd, you would agree that all four were you know, really good. <laughs> Interesting how these circles are almost the exact same shape over here. Uh, but you know, we're looking at the numbers here. Spin is actually pretty comparable. Um, and then we just had dispersion out to the right a little bit more with Sub-Zero. As you mentioned, again, sort of maybe a, a little more open at address, perhaps, set up there. But what did you notice in terms of the differences there between both of them? It's exactly that. I felt like I just couldn't get this club face to release over with it being that standard setting for me. Yeah. I mentioned my driver, I have it in the upright setting. Uh, that thing that counteracts the fact that club sitting a little bit flatter with this, knowing I like that more compact club head. So yeah. that was the big, big difference right there. And we, we will explore those options here at the end of this video. I'll probably play around with the Sub-Zero model, maybe yeah. put the weight forward and then maybe play around with a couple of these different settings. To yeah, that's actually what I was going to suggest now. Let's just put the weight forward in the Sub-Zero right now and we can just see how that compares. Because you actually hit this relatively high uh, in the sort of standard weight setting that it has right now. Yep. Um, but we can move the weight forward and we can drop the, well probably anyway, we should see the height drop a little bit, spin drop a little bit, and we'll see what happens there. Yeah, and then from there, I mentioned the upright setting is probably what I want to yeah. do eventually there too. So. All right, so we got it in the weight forward position here for the Sub-Zero. Okay. So now, what would you expect to see here? Yeah, maybe a little bit less spin, but I'd probably, maybe 200 RPM to spin less is what I, okay. you know, if I was a robot. I'm not <laughs> quite a robot, but right. I try my best, so, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, well, Thomas, you're smoking this thing. That's pretty clear. Um, now, we did expect, what did you say, 200 RPM, maybe less a spin? I think yeah. that's what you said, and it's pretty close. darn close. Um, we actually didn't even take out one that maybe, you know, we like to have four good ones, right? Yep. Um, so I can bring up the... That second um, shot 11 right there was the one I didn't feel like I hit quite okay. as solid. So if we do that, it brings the spin right down to 2,000, which is about 300 RPMs yeah, less. So, yeah, so, you know, spin was less. Your peak height was a little lower. Um, carry distance also slightly lower, but then, you know, total distance with that lower spin, uh, a little bit more rollout actually was the longest average so far. But that weight forward, and you did get a couple there at the end to kind of turn over as well, which is your preferred ball flight. So, yep. you know, this might be, I mean, so far of the three options so far, what do you, they're all fantastic. Uh, based on the numbers, what do you think so far? I like the spin at right around 2,000. I mean, with, yeah. with my club speed, pushing 110, 111, um, keeping it around that 2,000 to 2,500 mark is a good spot to be at. Yeah. I don't want to see it under that, um, but for me, I'm trying to maximize as much distance as I possibly right. can. Outside, I try and hit up on a little more, so I try and get the ball up in the air, but I try, no, if I have less loft on the club head, yeah. less spin setting, I can get as much distance as I can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you'll notice my attack angle, I hit up on it just a little bit more there with yep. that one there too. But it still notice it stayed down. So sure. the spin stayed down even though I was trying to get the ball up in the air. So. Gotcha. Um, I mentioned the upright setting. It's one thing I wanted to put, play around with this one here too. Okay. Because for me it's still, I'm looking down this one like this. Seems yeah. flat, I feel like yeah. I can make an adjustment. Let's do that. Let's, because uh, I know you wanted to kind of, you want that consistent right to left ball flight. So let's, yep. Maybe up, change it upright a little bit and see what okay. happens. So now we've got the sub-zero, weight forward, like the last four or five shots, but now we've got it upright. So hopefully kind of uh, the result will be a little bit more of a draw than you'd like. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it, when I send this down, yeah, it definitely looks like I feel like I'm going to maybe get that club face get a little bit more close there. Perfect.
There you go. All right, and then we'll bring up your dispersion here and look at some numbers here. So you're able to turn a couple of them over. Um, spin was relatively uh, kind of similar, but then you have, look at the circles on the right, and you notice that kind of light blue one with the upright setting is a little bit more left, which is kind of you know what you're looking for in that little draw yeah. type of trajectory. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised that it spun the exact same, and we've got the weight in the same position, yep. so it spun about 300 RPMs less. I said 200, I know Kelly would claim it's 300, so it's, <laughs> it's pretty close there. Um, I, I was impressed with the carry distance, so I was able to pick up maybe one or two more yards in carry distance. Yeah. 285 versus 282, so that was the highest carry distance they had, and highest distance, 315. You know yeah. I mean? You're so if you, me up. if you were fitting yourself this driver right now, you might that might be it right there. You might be that's the setting for that club head up upright uh, with the weight forward and the, and the sub zero. That's probably the best results. And it sounds like you've played a, a club head similar to that before too. So that's something you're comfortable with. Yeah, this is exactly what I would set it up. Now, there is also one other club head, too. Yes, yes. So yep. we are going to also experiment with Maverick Max and explore the options for those players looking for more forgiveness. That club head that we'll get to here, um, we'll kind of just get to that next right now, is going to be more forgiving, larger, higher MOI. And there's also a couple, a draw setting on there as well for some weights in the back to be adjusted. Yep. Why don't we just get into the Maverick Max right now, and okay. then we'll maybe do some more exploring with that one as well. Let's put that weight in the heel with the Maverick Max and try and get that kind of more draw bias. Mm -hmm. And then we'll maybe play a couple around with a couple other settings and see what sure. we can do there. Sure, let's do it. So Maverick Max now. Now we're going to kind of reiterate that this is not probably going to fit player of your swing speed and your ability to hit the center of the face every single time. But I think you can kind of play around with the fact that you like to draw the ball a lot. So we can put that weight with the Maverick Max in the heel and kind of create a draw bias there and we'll see how much that comes to fruition here with the next four to five shots. Yeah, so we, we went straight to putting in the heel. We didn't worry about putting it in the back. We know yeah. if we put it really far in the back here, it will make it even more forgiving. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really get that thing going left right yeah. now. So. Yeah, we'll see how far left, how much draw this Maverick Max with the weight yep. in the heel can provide for you. Much larger profile. You're looking down to that, it's gotta be a larger club head, larger footprint. Yeah. Does, do you see the draw bias like in the shape at all, or is it purely from the weight that you put in the back? I see a little bit of the toe maybe pointing a little bit to the left. Okay. Not a lot, but it, I, I can see a little bit yeah. compared to the other. We're coming from the, the Sub-Zero model for sure. Sure, yeah, because so. I think even the club shape in general should provide a little bit more draw bias as it is. And then obviously if you put the weight in the heel, that'll promote it even more. Yep. Looks like you're seeing a little bit higher ball flight, perhaps, especially when you do hit that kind of fade. Um, it is, you know, yeah. that's 113 feet in the air, which with the club head a little bit larger, higher MOI, maybe expect that a little bit. I mean, what's interesting, those last two, even though, yeah, I put a little bit of curve on it to the right, they were kind of starting at a little bit left for me. Yeah. So I noticed they were kind of starting a little left and then kind of coming back. So it's kind of, the club place was just a little bit closed. That was just me with my path on that last yeah. one, swinging a little bit, a little bit sure. left across the bowl. There you go. Nice. There's that draw you like to hit. Yeah. All right. Five shots with the Maverick Max. Weight in the heel. Any of these? Here we'll go to the dispersion here. But I mean, I guess in terms of looking at these, I mean, it's tough to take one out. They're all one five smash factor. <laughs> uh, I guess this could be the potential outlier. I mean, they're not really any outliers. They're all. Yeah, that, yeah, that one that's shorter, you could probably take that one out as the outlier. Um, I suppose. I mean, at this point, it's nitpicking. But looking yep. at average numbers now, spin actually was lower just because you had a couple that kind of really turned over that were about 1,600 RPM spin. But, I mean, your average distance, carry numbers, all very, very similar and consistent across the board here. Yeah, I mean, you'll notice there's a couple that were more to the left. Yeah. And there's a couple where I left the face a little bit open. But you'll notice they didn't go quite as far to the right. So they only got to, yeah. was that five, about seven yards right of the target, where every other model I've had one that's going to be a little pushed out to sure. the right there too. One so thing to note too, you mentioned the face angle. 
Um, at impact here, it looks like it's uh, so far, you know, the farthest closed or farthest left so, yep. uh, of every option we've had here. So you are, you know, that's it, helping you kind of straighten out and correct mm -hmm. a fade or a slice for golfers out there that would jump into the Maverick Max model. You would also notice my club path was the one that was kind of the furthest there to the left as well. So you'd think yeah, path true. a little left, face not matching up with that path as it could kind of curve across That's the That's creating right that fade, but, sure. Yeah, so it's but clearly the weight in the heel is at least helping you kind of square up or turn over the club head at impact. Yep. What was the average curve if we go all over the right? So seven feet of curve to the left. Yep. On the, on the right there. <laughs> An average. When so I had it clearly upright in the sub-zero, it was five feet of curve to the left. Yep. And the other two settings were going towards curving to the right. So, so I mean, and goodness gracious, Thomas, these numbers are awesome all across the board here. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I know, did you want to really try and just turn that thing over with um, adjusting it up right here? What, any other adjustments you want to make with the Maverick Max? So what we could do for that player that maybe having an, an issue to turn the ball over is we could go plus two. Okay. Um, and D. So plus two and D would be upright and kind of plus two. So let's see what happens if we go upright again. Okay. And then um, plus two and loft. Okay. We'll make the club a little bit more closed, I should say. No, it's certainly left, which is the goal of that adjustment there. But yeah. now I, I have to ask, because this is the first time I think the entire test I've seen a smash factor less than one five. So did it feel like you didn't hit it in the center? Got a little more loft on, well, a little more loft on this setting. Okay. So we noticed the ball speed dropped down a little bit. Gotcha. So that's, just, that's gonna happen naturally with more loft. Yeah, sure. usually when I have less loft on the club head, there's potential to have more ball speed associated okay. with, the, with the club. So Got it. Could be a reason why it was only 164 and that's why it didn't go quite as far. But. Sure. So now with the extra loft, that kind of takes away some potential distance too? Depends on your attack angle. Okay. Um, depends on the player. So if someone hits down on it with their driver, we need loft to get the ball up in the air because carry distance is important. Because I'm efficient, my attack angle usually is about three degrees up. I yeah. can get away with a little bit less loft on the club head. Okay. So, so it does depend on the player, but yeah, in your case, in your case player. you're taking away some potential distance by... Yeah with the Maverick driver, you know, upping that loft a little bit, two degrees yep. in that setting. Now keep in mind, you know, when I, we're technically putting it at plus two, which the you know, Callaway says plus two and loft, what I'm doing is actually kind of closing the club face a little bit. Okay. That's all, that's all that's happening. Sure. So. Hit it solid. Yeah, that's, that that's really very good. good. Yeah. Well, looking at the numbers here, Thomas, uh, a little bit higher height, which we would have expected. Uh, yep. A little bit more spin, and then the carry and total distance did drop off. But looking at the dispersion on the left here, you know, the idea of moving it upright um, in that plus two setting, the idea is to create pretty much as left, as much draw bias, as much left bias as possible for the yep. Maverick Max driver, and it did turn out to be the farthest left circle on here. Yeah, I mean. Not one shot that I hit with this setting was right of that what, that middle line right yeah. there. So that's, you notice we had two of them that were pretty far over there to the left. I mentioned ball speed dropped a couple of miles an hour. That's because we had a little more loft on the club yeah. head. So it was about 160, 164. 164. So, so yeah, a little my, bit lower. Yeah, so my, just a little bit lower. I mean, efficiency is still pretty good. Um, but just a little bit less ball speed. Launched a little higher, a little more spin. I mean, so basically what you would good. expect by A, using the Maverick Max clubhead, yep. and then B, making that adjustment to plus two, kind of adding a little bit of loft there in that upright closed face setting. So left ball flight, higher launch, kind of what you'd expect, and then giving those golfers that you know, do struggle with the slice, do struggle with the fade, um, that option to close the face sort of naturally by the club without adjusting their swing. Yeah. One other setting I want to play around with. 
So this is the other end of the spectrum. So I want to go back to the sub-zero head. I want to put okay. that at the minus one. Okay, so this I'm is kind chasing, of... I'm chasing distance right now. I'm just chasing this low spin. Okay. I'll try and hit up. I'll try and hit as far as I possibly can. See if I can get okay. myself a little more distance. So we'll go to Maverick sub-zero. Yep. And see how much distance you can get out of the Maverick line here. Yep, sounds good. All right, Thomas, we've explored some options with the Sub-Zero. We've explored some options with the Maverick Max. We've hit the Maverick standard model in the standard settings there. And now you're, you've kind of fitted yourself you know, for the Sub-Zero. And this is kind of the last setting you wanted to try just to see maximum distance where you could get out of it. Yeah, so this more compact head suits my eye better. Um, lower spinning, not as much hook bias on it. I just want to see if I can maybe get myself over 320. Okay, I would, uh, that would, 320. That would be my goal if I can get there. We'll see 320 is the goal. All right, yeah. let's see it. We got. I don't think I've hit a 320 this year, so. Let's get five swings, see how close we can get to 320 or if we can get over 320. Jumping after it. Uh-oh, that has it. Ooh. The so ball speed was up. That's perhaps the highest ball speed of the day. But I didn't hit the ball high enough, so it didn't carry far enough. Yeah. So you're looking to carry this probably, it's got to be like 290, right? To get, to get it close to 320? Yep. <laughs> highest ball speed of the day. There it is. 321. There we go. 321. So clearly this has worked. This is the setting that has given you the most potential distance so far. That's 321. That's the highest number I've seen from you and oh, ever, I, I think. Yep. So keep in mind, with this, I have to hit, force myself hit up on a little bit more. I'm going to take a look at my attack angle yeah. on that, because there's less lock on the club head. Um, so would you say this is perhaps not how you would typically swing in competition? Probably not. I would want a more consistent, more reliable swing and know that I'm okay. actually going to hit it in the fairway every, sing every single time. I just know if I was really trying to chase distance. Yeah, I, I, could, I could try and hit up on the ball a little bit more, be more efficient. And as long as I keep that spin down, launch mm -hmm. a little higher with hitting up on it, it's going to go really far. Right. I mean, if you're trying to get extra distance, yep. lowering that spin to 1,800, I mean, it's not the ideal number in terms of you also want to keep that height at about 100 feet-ish. Mm -hmm. But that right there with that ball speed up at 169, that's also maybe the highest I've seen from you before. So. I mentioned I wanted to get to 170. I got you did. three swings left, right? That's, yeah, I guess if you want to get after it and see if you can get 170, that's going to take. It's going to take a little bit more club speed. <laughs> Come on, you cut me point oh, one no. on short. And it gave me a misread. I got the ball speed anyway. That's, we can round that up to 170, can't we? Nope, I'm a perfectionist. Two more chances at the 170 ball speed. Wow, look at that. You just had to tug it a lot. Yeah. You got the ball speed at the 170. There you go. That's why I don't swing like that, though. <laughs> you wouldn't use that on the course. Yeah. So yes, there's advantages. But also, you'll notice the dispersion was a little wider. Yeah, no, that's, too, that's, so. that's just for fun. Power control. Just yeah. for fun, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. yeah. The uh, red circle here, a little bit larger than yeah. the rest. So that last one was obviously the outlier, so you'll yeah. take that out. <laughs> that's the one that got 170, though. We want to keep right. that in there. We'll, we'll see the other ones that were close. So, you know, taking that out, hey, just swing your tail off and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but notice that I actually didn't really pick up that much distance because I lost a little bit in carry distance. Right. So my height was down. Yeah. So. But at the end of the day, I mean, so we got Maverick standard, you know, we hit that in the standard loft, and then we went to the sub zero, kind of played around with that a little bit, put that weight forward, and really lowered that spin a little bit for you. And then uh, we kind of dialed in, you know, sort of what you would think is this, your ideal setting for mm -hmm. the Maverick sub zero upright, weight forward. And then we explored Maverick max. Uh, so we put the weight in the heel to kind of really get that draw bias. And then we added the plus two setting to it. Even more draw bias, and that was that green circle up here, farthest left on the dispersion map. So, I mean, looking at these numbers, man, they're, they're your carry distance end on the, all of them, your ball end speed. End of the day, they're all about the same. Yep. It's the, yeah, it, 
these numbers are tremendous. And yeah. I know I've seen you hit a ton of drivers while doing these videos. This is probably the best consistent distance performance I've seen from like one line of, it's, it's up there for sure. This, is, this was pretty remarkable to watch. Yeah, end of the day, talk with your fitter about what you're trying to achieve out on the golf course. We have options with adjustability, so we can put this in more upright, we can put it flatter, we can put it down, we can put it up, move the weights around, really to try and cater what that player is trying to do. So yeah. that's probably the most important thing is these drivers have options. We're trying to explore them a little bit. We'll notice what happened with my dispersion pattern. Some were left, some were right, yep. some were a little bit straighter, some were maybe carrying a little bit further, some were carrying quite as far, and some were giving yep. us higher ball speed numbers. Um, but at the end of the day, work with your club fitter, that's probably the most important thing is what I'd recommend. Absolutely. Yeah. Thomas, thanks for hitting a bunch of shots for us, helping us explain, explore the data, explore the different options with Callaway Maverick. Uh, clearly a great driver option for golfers in 2020 and beyond.